Hi, it's Ms. Rita. Ancient Tools Located in South Africa's Northern Cape Province, Vandervert Cave is full of clues about our prehistoric past. Here, there is evidence that human ancestors were crafting stone tools as far back as 1.8 million years ago. The tools were found in a layer of sediment within the cave that also contained animal remains and fire remnants. Using several dating methods, experts determined that the shift from simple old Owen stone tools, such as sharp flakes and objects used for chopping, to more complex objects like basic hand axes, occurred around 1 million years ago which is also when our ancestors were first known to deliberately create fire. Vandervert Cave is quite possibly the oldest known home that was inhabited by early humans. First excavated in the 1940s, it contains a plethora of artwork and other artifacts reflecting a long history of use by our predecessors. And these discoveries are helping researchers piece together the little understood timeline of human evolution and migration, as well as how these things relate to climate change. Genghis Khan's Winter Home Genghis Khan lived from between 1162 to 1227 AD. He founded the second largest empire in the history of the planet, but when he wasn't busy leading the Mongols on a series of campaigns, he was hunkering down in his winter home. Up until now, nobody knew where this mysterious winter home was. But now researchers from Australian National University believe they have discovered the mysterious location of the Great Khan's Winter Hideout. Scientists use soil samples from Avraja, an ancient site that has yielded little in the way of physical evidence, located near the Avraja River, to determine that the place was occupied throughout the time that Genghis Khan was alive, as well as with his son after his death. The experts at the university are now saying that he probably made his camp at this place by the river for spring and winter, and that it was probably the main base camp before the Mongol Empire pushed south into the Yuan Empire of China. This site was largely abandoned after the 14th century. The only things archaeologists have found have been leftover bones. And as for the great Genghis Khan's actual burial tomb, it has still never been found. But discovering the place he once called home is definitely a great first step in trying to track down the final resting place of the Khan of Khans. The Dancing Figurine A small figurine was discovered in southwestern Siberia, and it has archaeologists shocked and puzzled. The object is a bronze figurine that looks like a dancing human, but the way it was sculpted seems to portray an individual in the midst of movement, something that is highly unusual in ancient figurines. What's even stranger is that the figurine appears to have been made in India before traveling across the Silk Road to finally end its journey in Siberia, where it was lost along the shore of the Ob River before eventually being recovered by modern archaeologists. According to Andrei Borodovsky from the Russian Academy of Sciences, the statue likely shows an Indian religious dancer. It was probably crafted sometime around 100 BC. This is amazing, seeing as 2,000 years ago, a small figure was able to travel over 3,000 miles from India to Novosibirsk, a way only passable by going over treacherous mountains and dangerous terrain. The figurine was found by accident during a construction project, Nobody was even looking for the thing. Experts now say the figurine was probably traded multiple times, suggesting it didn't make the whole journey at once. It may have eventually been left on the bank of the river as an offering or a sacrifice. The exact place where the figurine was found happens to be exactly where the Ob River is narrowest. An ancient trader probably sacrificed the figurine in hopes he would make it across the river alive. Shipwreck remains. A warship was recently discovered sunk at the bottom of the Mekong River in Cambodia's Kampong Cham province. The warship had been sunk during the bloody civil war that went down in Cambodia in the 1970s. A team of underwater recovery specialists were investigating the wreckage when they discovered the old remains of a soldier who had likely been on the warship when it sank. The original team of researchers were sent to the bottom of the Mekong River to take out the unexploded bombs and dispose of them safely. They hadn't expected to find the bones of a fallen soldier. According to the research team, the soldier had likely been guarding the ship. They even found his name tag. The young soldier's name was Chim Chingli. The government has since called on the man's family to claim his bones and give him a proper burial. As for the warship, officials found a significant amount of unexploded ordnance. They also discovered 60mm shells, 105 millimeter shells and almost 55,000 bullets from handguns and machine guns, and this was only from a single section of the ship. This thing was equipped for battle. 
The ship was actually used to transport ammunition between 1970 and 1975, until it exploded and sank to the bottom of the river, probably in late 73 or early 74. Battersea Shield The Battersea Shield is an amazing work of art that was actually dredged up accidentally from the bottom of the River Thames in London. The Iron Age Shield was made by the Celts. In the same area, workers also found large quantities of Roman and Celtic weapons. The artistry displayed on the Battersea Shield is emblematic of the Celtic Latin style of art, which is made up of intertwining circles and spiral formations along with engraving and stippling. This sheet of bronze would have covered a wooden shield that is now missing. This bronze shield facing is made from different parts of sheet bronze that are then put together with bronze rivets and enclosed in a binding strip. It also contains a great deal of red glass enamel, which the Celts were adept at using in their art. Based on dating techniques, Scientists have estimated that it was probably made at some point between 350 and 50 BC. This piece of history dredged up from the channel is one of the most significant pieces of ancient Celtic art and military equipment found in Britain. It is now housed in the British Museum. Mysterious Enclosures at Stonehenge Some very mysterious discoveries have just been made at Stonehenge, allowing archaeologists to get a better picture of what life was like around this famous monument 4,500 years ago. It all began when a controversial road tunnel beside Stonehenge was scheduled to commence. Archaeologists had to get in there ahead of the road tunnel before the construction workers so they didn't ruin any possible archaeological discoveries. And guess what? Live science reports they found ancient graves almost immediately, including one that contained a pot alongside the remains of a baby at least 4,500 years old. Another pit nearby contains the remains of a woman who died in her 20s. Her body crouched around a relatively ornate pot, or beaker. These remains were most likely people from the Beaker tribe, a mysterious ancient civilization. The archaeologists also found a bizarre earth enclosure that they can't really figure out. Made up of a pattern of buried ditches, it seems like it was made to surround something. The enclosure was discovered slightly south of the graves, but it was created about 1,000 years earlier. According to Matt Lavers, with Wessex Archaeology, the enclosure had traces of burned flint in the soil. He says this could indicate that some kind of dirty or smelly activity took place within the enclosure. What exactly that activity was? Well, nobody is really sure. Bones Beneath Medieval Church Archaeologists working in Poland have uncovered a scary horde of human remains while in the middle of conserving a medieval church. Located in the small Polish city of Dansk, it took two years of digging out and analyzing thousands of bones. They came out in all shapes and sizes, and dating them has been a challenge. Archaeologists dug up the bones of at least 64 humans, including men, women, and children. Most of the bodies were likely buried beneath the church in the Middle Ages. Studying their remains has proved very insightful to scientists. For example, researchers found that the men and women buried beneath the church were about 3.9 inches taller than the people who later inhabited the city. Researchers blamed the shrinkage on the fact that the city grew overcrowded, there were frequent disease epidemics, and living conditions became worse and worse. After the excavations were complete, three skulls and a handful of bones were put inside of a wooden casket and carried down into the church's crypt, where the nameless dead will be remembered. Human Skull Tower Archaeologists excavating a building in the center of Mexico City have discovered an Aztec tower of human skulls. Known as Huey it is a circular tower made from human skulls that was part of a skull rack from the temple to the Aztec god of the sun, war, and human sacrifice, Huitzilopochtli. Located near the Templo Mayor archaeological site in Mexico City, which the Aztecs called Tenochtitlan, it measures roughly 16.4 feet in diameter and dates back to the late 15th and early 16th centuries. The site was first uncovered in 2015, and by 2017, archaeologists had discovered 484 skulls. In March of last year, they found 119 more skulls, bringing the total to 603. The skulls belong to men, women, and at least three children, according to Rodrigo Bolaños Martinez, an archaeologist with the National Institute of Anthropology and History. It was extremely unusual to find children's skulls. Something is happening that we have no record of, and this is really new, a first in the way Tsompantli, he said. His team members said that it's likely that some of the skulls belong to individuals who were sacrificed to the Aztec gods, while others were warriors. But through their sacrifice, they all were made sacred, turned into gifts for the gods or even personifications of deities themselves. 
The team says that human sacrifices were a daily ritual in Mesoamerica, and that these gory practices were carried out with the purpose of renewing nature and the continuity of life itself. The Aztecs displayed freshly severed heads on zompantli, or skull racks, a practice that was common among several Mesoamerican societies. After they were done being exhibited, the skulls were transferred to the tower. Hernán Cortés and the Spanish conquistadors he led on the conquest of Tenochtitlan in 1521 witnessed human sacrifices and were absolutely horrified by the practice. Researchers believe that the Way Tompatli is one of seven similar structures that once stood in the area, based on contemporary accounts of the city's capture by Cortés. They also believe that the conquistadors destroyed the other structures as soon as they could. Antikythera Man One of the most famous shipwrecks of the ancient world is probably the Antikythera shipwreck, discovered off the coast of Greece near the island of the same name. You've probably heard of it already because of the famous Antikythera mechanism, considered to be the world's oldest computer. It may have been used to plan religious rituals, agricultural activities, and perhaps even the Olympic Games. The wreck was first discovered in 1900, but underwater missions have been ongoing. And now, thanks to new advanced equipment, underwater archaeologists have been able to uncover even more. Most of the site has remained unexplored because of how deep it is and because of the shape of the sea floor, which makes it difficult to access. There are hundreds of treasures that have been found at the site, including bronze and marble sculptures, coins, gold jewelry, and perhaps even more important, a skeleton. With the new technology, scientists can now analyze the DNA of an ancient mariner, human remains from ancient shipwrecks are extremely uncommon, as you can imagine. The man may have been trapped below deck when the ship hit the rocks and sank. More human remains and precious cargo might still be at the underwater site, and the international team is hoping to uncover even more of the shipwreck secrets. The Ballista Skeleton In Dorset, United Kingdom, there once stood the largest hill fort in all of Europe, Maiden Castle. The castle was constructed in the Iron Age and occupied by a tribe named the Duro Triges. The farmers and villagers from this tribe worked the land outside the ramparts and were able to flee into the great defensive walls of the fortress if an attack were ever to come their way. When Rome invaded in 43 AD, Roman soldiers fought their way through Dorset with the intention of capturing Maiden Castle. The Roman army was far superior to the farming Duro Triges who fought back using nothing but slings and stones. The Romans were too strong and the farmers were massacred in huge numbers. They were then buried in mass graves. These graves were excavated at Maiden Hill in the 1930s by a renowned geologist named Mortimer Wheeler. The most shocking discovery during the excavations was a skeleton found with a Roman ballista bolt still lodged inside of his spine. As if the Roman attackers didn't believe this man was dead with a ballista bolt stuck through his body, they then smashed his skull with an axe. His skeleton sat in pretty rough shape for nearly 2,000 years. The bolt forever stuck in his spine. Thanks for watching! Which of these discoveries shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments below! And be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for another video! See you later!